everyone. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Why welcome. Are You Still Here? Yes. The show where Lucas and I talk about whatever we want and keeping that For in the mind, second time for this episode. Dose. Um, keeping that no in mind, Glaze. this is something that uh, we have never done before, but I, I just wanted to start this episode off um, on something that isn't connected to the the topic we'll get to the topic in just a moment don't you worry but i don't even know uh, what he's about to say guys either so this is all real time something happened today and uh you know some news dropped that made me a little bit unhappy it was the damn steve from blues clues no i'm kidding uh that was kind of fun though um (laughs) i heard about i don't forgive you steve you left me in a time of need in my life. Anyway, <laughs> um, no, this is uh, this is about Halloween kills. And okay, so I was right, you guys. I assumed it was either a celebrity got canceled again or it was something to do with Halloween. I mean, in all fairness, those are the only two things I care about in life. So, yeah, that's true, guys. You know, um, but uh, no, the news dropped. I don't know around five o'clock or so today by the time you're watching us it'll probably be a couple days old the news and maybe maybe you're okay with it now or maybe you're okay with it already i i don't know it's uh, universal has decided to do a day and date release with peacock so they were going to be sticking to their guns like a couple movies have done recently. You got your candy man, your quiet place, part two, your F nine, um, free guy there. There's a slew of movies that, that had enough confidence in themselves where they are like, we're only going to be doing a theater release and that's it. You know, too bad. You don't want to come see it in theaters. That's not our problem. Catch it a month from now when it's on, on demand. Um, they're doing basically what Disney's doing. And I have so many problems with this. If you notice, this news dropped right after all those poor reviews for the movie dropped. So I wonder. So it was strategically planned, you say? I think so. I think so. I don't think that it was. And as you can tell, I'm very heated about this. The more I talk yeah, he's about very it, heated. More... So tune in for the next uh, <laughs> the more... in, uh, a couple of weeks where we talk about uh, the <laughs> death of the movie theater. I don't even want to talk about that. Oh, I don't oh, even want to a real hot topic that that's even a possibility that, that Jake is sitting my... there scratching his head saying, why the fuck would you want to leave the house anyway? <laughs> Do you know how? And, you know, it's it's it, I'll, I'll say this before we have to move on, because Brandon's face says a lot. And even I get have gotten chastised by so many friends and family, those close to me, my cherished loved ones. Right. For wanting to go to a movie theater. Nobody understands why I want to go. Even. Brandon doesn't understand why I want to go to my ghetto AMC. He just doesn't understand the, everyone has their own appeal to it. And when I go to the movies, I've, I've been going to the same movie theater since before a lot of people were even born that might be watching this video since at least 2002. I know for a fact, I saw chamber of secrets there. So 2002 onward. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've been going there for years for a long time. And when I, and it's literally less than a quarter mile down the road from my house. <laughs> so it's just absolutely convenient. I love it. And uh, <sighs> I don't want to watch the movie at home. I want to watch it. Why do I want to see it on my 43 inch 4K TV streaming? Mm-hmm. I want to see it on a giant projector with a big chair. I can just relax in with strangers who are coughing all over the place. Infectious disease, you know, popcorn. Come on, man. <laughs> Give me the experience. I will take <sighs> an experience at a theater where I might lose my life, like at Lucas's <laughs> theater, <laughs> over staying at home any day. And yeah. we will move on. But there's one big thing I must say before we do, and that is pirating. This is my issue with this. If anybody was wondering, Brandon, what's your problem with this? Well, other than the movie theater part, it's pirating. 
you know people are going to pirate this movie now. It's going to be substantially well, easier. Um, as soon as the announcement was made, I saw it on Facebook. The first comment I saw in the video was, hey, I bet it's going to be on the net in a day. High five. <laughs> like I want, I was like enraged. I wanted to report the, <laughs> the comments. <laughs> God, and he's really an old just, man now. I'm just worried now. I was not worried about the poor reviews. I am worried. You're not even going to have to be now. worried about getting spoiled almost. I basically. think Universal has lost some confidence in the movie. I, this just, my mind runs rampant that the movie's not going to make any money because of pirating. Halloween ends is going to have its budget cut into smithereens, which they've done before. They did it with Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Oh, um, I hate that movie. And, uh, you know, things Guys, can happen. Like that one. Jamie Lee Curtis might say, hey, I'm not coming back because so much of her paycheck is contingent on on what they bring in in the box office. They might say, hey, let's not even do Halloween ends at all now. So they're in pre-production. They're not in production. I will not let this go until they're officially in production. So that's all I have to say on the matter. Um, I don't want to take up too much time, obviously, but this yes, is a real I'm hot not, button issue with me. I tell I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to cut them off right here. Tune in for multiple episodes based off of Halloween kills, the death of the movie theater <laughs> and the uptick of streaming and piracy and whatever he just came up with. So today is going to be our redo. The death of movie reasons. That's uh, all right. Yes, but let's stop talking. Why are you still talking? <laughs> Today is going to be our reshoot. Uh, uh, our senile late night expose on outdated tech. Useful. Oh, there we go. Useless. And today we're going to talk about just that. This is a topic that I'm going to take the reins over and uh, I'm going to get a little more passionate. Nothing too angry, so to speak, but... Uh, Let's just say that I'm going to convince all of you to be on my side, just uh, <laughs> just as a heads up. I think I have the upper hand in this argument. Um, there comes a point with technology where <clears throat> it's going to either be useful or useless. So in order to stay on track with this debate because I'm about to lose it really quickly. I had to look at our <laughs> bullet point list. You saw me trailing off very hardcore there, but <laughs> we got our bullet point list what? here. I was getting a little too cocky. What, what constitutes as old Lucas? <laughs> oh, well, if you don't say Brandon, well, let me just tell you. I just came up with that at the top of my head. Oh, really? That's just a nice bullet point. Oh, I wonder how <laughs> intelligent. So, <laughs> no, what I, I would constitute old technology is uh, maybe something that's about almost a decade out, almost bordering that useless line. Um, that would be outdated, right? What would you say? I mean, I think it's it's different for everybody. I think that you know, each person has their own definition. You probably have your own definition for it. For me, outdated would probably just be, you know, any technology that now has a, a successor, if that makes sense. Oh, anything that really broadens the, uh, the spectrum there, because I mean, would you say that you're, well, once once the new M1 chips come out, is your MacBook that's top of the line now outdated? Yes. And I, I don't look forward to that day. <laughs> well, then you're going to be playing a real hard cat and mouse game. I'm not saying that time. I'm going to buy it, mind you. But uh, luckily, luckily this year, uh, the new M1 chips are or M2 chips or whatever they're going to be doing. Um, they're 14 inch MacBooks, so it is bigger than the one I have right now. It's, they're they're not making a new 13 inch one at least for another year. So I'll or be so okay. we think we'll we will find out yeah. on the 14th. And I True. I really hope everything's wrong so I can tell you and all these other YouTubers that were clickbaiting that they were wrong. That's beside the point. But I think what you raise is an interesting point 
in and of itself because I don't have that same definition. And I think this makes more sense. I think other people might agree with me more. Yeah, it might be a year old. I wouldn't say it's outdated. I'm not going to say that M1 MacBook is going to be outdated until it's eight or nine years worth of support is over. Uh, uh, I have a good example for that. I don't know if I should take out this prop just yet. I have multiple that I could use, but <laughs> Uh, stop. Just let's not go there. Stop laughing. If you're making a joke, Brandon, <laughs> maybe before you pull anything out. Um, I think now is as good a time as any, I mean, you could pull that out. That's to discuss my Jenga tower. Of uh, madness. Th- I think that now is the best time more than any other time, I guess, uh, to mention where did this idea come from? And it, it came from the fact that Lucas here, yes. has a Jenga tower that he's building out of old <laughs> Mac products. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. He literally, you know, for a while there, I, I got to say, I, I got to give you a hand for the restraint that you've been showing, or you just haven't been telling me about it uh, for fear yes. of judgment. But uh, for a while He's, there, he you knows were, you're spending a lot of time on eBay there going, um, okay, uh, that MacBook, uh, that MacBook, that MacBook, uh, that MacBook, <laughs> and just going down the list until there was like, none left on eBay, and you had to wait until was you know, I, more were listed. Wait, 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 was I talking to you the day that I sent in my bid for this, literally like a millisecond before the auction ended? It, we, I was at work that day, surprisingly, and I somehow managed to snag like the greatest deal on this thing I think, ever. I think I remember you telling and, me. And the cool about thing, guys, that. about about these older style MacBooks that are, according to Brandon, outdated, according to me, not. Uh, the coolest thing about these is that uh, you're going to be able to get uh, a $1,700 computer for a couple hundred. You're going to be able to put a new battery in it that costs maybe 45 or 50 bucks. You're also going to be able to put a hard drive in it that costs 80 so, you know, for a hundred some odd dollars, you're going to be able to give this thing a uh, new life. It's going to be a lot better than what it was. Uh, the Ram is soldered onto the motherboard in these, uh, <clears throat> in these later models, which is really what you're going to have to go with. If you want the feature set, that's not going to be outdated because why is this not outdated though? It came out in 2013 because it is still fully supported under the Big Sur operating system. So what our Macs are, our M1 Macs, Brandon, run the exact same operating system that this does, does the exact same feature set. Now it's the Apple built-in feature set, right? It's not going to be able to edit on Final Cut Pro. This thing was never going to do that when it was new. If you keep your expectations in line, an older machine like this can be really useful for somebody who was just going to buy a $1,000 MacBook Air to go on Facebook anyway. You get what I'm saying? So in terms of, of cost cutting, it's immaculate. If something like this existed when back in 2007, when I was really interested in new tech and slightly outdated tech, but mostly new stuff, almost dropped it. Um, <laughs> we're going to put it down for right now. Um <clears throat> Again, if I could have gotten a 13-year-old MacBook that looked this good, that worked, I would have called the cops because it's not going to happen. 13 years, 8 years. This is 8 years. That's what I meant to say. Because uh, an 8-year-old MacBook didn't exist. It was called the uh, uh, PowerBook and the iBook. Mm -hmm. So, And that wasn't doing YouTube whatsoever in 2007. So... uh, and even for a kid that would want a Mac, this is really good entry level. You know, for a grandma, this is perfect. For, I hate to say it, but stereotypically, like a girl who's just going to be on Facebook or Instagram and occasionally needs to like type up a document or even for yeah. school, this is this right. is perfect. You can do everything online through the cloud nowadays. So you hardly even need the processing power of this thing or it's non existent graphics card. It's just, it's really nice for the price. Right. I get what you're saying that you can easily get by with. Now, this is not outdated to me. It will be in a couple years. Um, If you want to see the real definition of what outdated is, it's going to be this product, because this is something that I would consider 
uh, completely useless, actually. It's outdated. It has no purpose unless you're like me and you're a freakazoid. Do you know what I'm about to show, Brandon? Uh, the original iPhone. Close enough. This is the... Oh, God, there's a box. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> because you can get these uh, with all the original packaging for less than 30 bucks. Cool. So this is the. <laughs> so this is the iPhone 3GS. Mm. It was in 2009. It was the first iPhone. Look to at have that boy. Video recording. Um, now, the coolest thing about this one as well, it was also one of the first iPhones to have App Store support. Uh, because the original iPhone stock shipped with like nine apps. You couldn't do anything else with it. It was very bare bones for what it was. Um, but for this phone being 12 years old and as small as it is, phones are uh, tiny, considerably oh, bigger. Jesus. Yes. When you put it in perspective. Holy it's a- shit. <laughs> Excuse my language. Yes. But my God. But my point is, even for having a home button and a really small screen, Its design language is absolutely gorgeous. Um, But here's the rub. When you turn it on, you ain't doing it. It explodes. Shit. No. You you can't watch YouTube videos. You can hardly load any web page. You can do iMessage. The emojis are not built into the keyboard. If you get sent one, it gets sent as like a JPEG. Uh, it, It can do iMessage to the most bare bones degree. You cannot connect this uh, via its SIM tool here to any network. It just doesn't work. Uh, For all intents and purposes, this is a a paperweight. Um, But when you're when you're weird like me, you can hunt and find somebody who thinks that this is this is trash, which I mean, it can't really be trash when it comes with these original manufacturer accessories. (laughs) Oh, 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 it's so cool. And and. And here it is. And this is this is how you know you got a good one. First of all, it comes with actual manuals, but I like I like haven't seen so, in a while. So if you just want something to kind of you know as a relic for for you know thirty bucks shipped. Probably even less now that I made this. People are like trying to get rid of them now that they have seen me <laughs> talk about also, the iPhone 3GS. It can take video, right? It can, but it's bad. It's okay. really bad. You That's need to be the first one that was able to take video then. Very right? first one, yeah. Okay. For some reason, I thought the four was, but no, that um, was the first one I think you could like send video with, like in the MMS. I think this okay. was just texting. Okay. Um, I could be wrong on that, but but this one, like I said, the uh, the box showcases the features on the uh, older iPhones. It was Steve Jobs. It was a completely different design language, guys. Steve Jobs was so much better with Apple. I but as you can see at the bottom, icon. I like. That well, nose. yeah, it's it's the skeuomorphic design to kind of give you a clue. Like, so even if you yeah. don't understand technology, you're able to kind of work around based off the imagery. Uh, Apple. I love them guys. They're, they're really cool. Um, anyway, as cool as this is, and as much as I love it, it's useless. I can't do anything with yeah. it as to wear it. That MacBook, I can, I can do what I'm doing right now with it, but it's just going to look a, a little bad. <laughs> yeah. I was about and, to say that is the device. I wasn't sure if you're going to bring it up, but that is the device that broke Lucas. <laughs> if you remember, yes. You were you that were was so, the first one. You're going hard into the paint, as they say. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know who as, says as that. The kids say I say that now. Yeah, the kids say it. Um, you're going hard into the paint on this whole old school Mac products, and then uh, your dream died one day when you were on that phone. Well, Is the Mac, yes, the the phone, absolutely not. But it also. Again, uh, when you use this, it's like a time capsule of what iOS used to be. Uh, one of my favorite things about it, and it's totally separate, and this shows um, <clears throat> the age of the device. But as you can see here on the box again, we have iTunes, which now has changed into Apple Music. It is it is a better service. I will agree with you on that. But um, you know how you're listening to your music on this, Brandon? 
Well, by going to the iPod app, of course, oh, how else would yeah. you listen to your music or watch your, your videos, which are somewhere else on here? They're not displayed on the screen because it wasn't a new feature. But anyway, it, yeah, TV on there. Uh, that's for that's for YouTube. Actually, this is before apps. Uh, you could download the third party YouTube one. And that's what the YouTube stock app was built in with in 2007. Huh. It was very different. Yeah. You couldn't even look at channels on it. It was strictly videos. You couldn't even rate them or comment on them. You could just watch them. Nothing else. Those are very, Those very are primitive. Good. Yeah. It was very different. I had the iPod touch in 2007 because it replaced uh, one of my other bad boys, but we'll continue on. So this one, it's very cool for me as a techie and I, other people would like th- see this and they'll say, you know what? I'm going to go look this up on YouTube. They see videos on it. They see commercials from back then. They might see people unboxing it from 2007 and they might say, huh, I think I want to get a slice of that action. So it's, it's just something cool. It's like a, like a hobbyist t- sort of thing, but um, you don't see it that way. You kind of look at it as uh, it, my tech has to be useful. Otherwise you're not going to indulge in it so much. Yeah, I have problems, you know, I, I just, I, I'm always looking for the next best thing and which is so weird. It's so contradictory with everything I stand yeah. for, you know, like that's why like, it's, it's really funny. And I'm just going to cut you off only to say this because we mentioned this at the beginning of the other take. We haven't said it yet is that I assumed that Brandon would be all over the nostalgia train with older tech and getting it to work and you know making it usable in 2021 and beyond and when i found out that he didn't care that my 15 inch macbook that is essentially a desktop replacement which is like the 1965 shelby mustang of fucking macbooks because it is like the last macbook where you can upgrade the ram by yourself without having a salt desolder which you're not going to do unless you're a a real professional. Uh, it's the last one with the disc drive. It's the last one to have that Steve Jobs feature set. It's before that move forward, but it still was upgradable up until last year officially from Apple. So it's okay. a very capable machine. In fact, I'll show it as like one of the last props. Like I think the second to last prop I'll end up showing here because it's something that you have to like, oh God, like I actually, did you see me kind of like <laughs> falter? Like I wasn't even trying to be funny. It's that heavy. Yeah, um, it's gigantic. If you, if you compare it just by size uh, of the case alone, <laughs> it's it's absolutely astronomical. But that's what makes this so cool. Um, this oh, machine so was this machine was over <laughs> almost three thousand dollars when it came out. Uh, it has the highest uh, processor. I think it's an uh, i7 2.7 dual core. But it's absolutely huge. Look at that thing. And I guess for reference, here's an iPhone, standard iPhone. That's what it looks like next to it. It's, it is huge. It's essentially a desktop. But yeah. guess what? It has 16 gigabytes of RAM. It, and it, it, it can load some web pages faster than my MacBook Pro does. Now, they're both Intel, but... This beast, unless you're trying to, you know, use something graphically intensive for video editing, which no, that's not happening. I will say that Um, this thing is so adequate that it is. I don't want to get rid of it. You saw it here, people. I like this one a lot. (laughs) This is my classic car car. And I, I like the little MacBook Air, too. But this one, dude, look, it has the full range of uh ports. It's got MagSafe. It's Does got that a disk last... drive on that bad boy? Yep, right on the other side. Ooh. And uh, it has this really cool thing called a battery indicator right here. If you press it, it'll show you uh, how much battery is left. Where's the uh, little mm-hmm. button? Oh, God. I got to get just right angle. There we go. You yeah, see it? see it. It's got about half battery left. It's so just it's probably the first thing they ripped out. When they decided oh, oh, how yeah, they were that, gonna scale it that, down, and then this, those were the first two. But uh, this one oh, is God. just, yeah, 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 yeah. It's very retro. But the coolest thing about it is, for being almost ten years old, look at how modern it still looks. Though, I mean, if you were at a coffee shop, other than how big it is, like 
screen size wise, you might not glance twice at it. I mean, it's very beautiful still because it's yeah. still a, it's still a three thousand dollar computer essentially. Sure, and it's. I mean, you're right. It, it, Apple hasn't changed the way that their stuff has looked for a while. Um, but I, I must jump back quickly here and say that um, my my feelings on these, you know, tech, so to speak, I don't know. Um, I was going to say my feeling on these matters, but that doesn't really make yes. sense. But uh, it does, you know, but eh, whatever. Um, it just, you know, it, it doesn't really make sense for what I stand for. Right. Because like Lucas mentioned, I am disgustingly nostalgic just yeah. like he is. And I should be all up about it. You know, I should be. Oh yeah. Into if this I didn't 100%. grow up with that particular model and, and idolize that model in like uh high school, I don't think I, I would care about that one as much for sure. sure. It's a lot of nostalgia. Same with that iPhone model. So that's why I was so shocked right. that it just goes against your grain. With, yeah, with it, that. it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I guess it's like my nostalgia is there to a point, you know, like I have I, I'm I guess you have a line in nostalgia until it gets to the point where it's, you know, has no use to me anymore, I guess. Well, at, at what point does that like trump any convenience? Because by that logic again i feel like you should just love these emulators dude like today we you know we were going through the stress of of trying to re-edit it and then you said you had stomach problems so i just had, did not want to send this to you because it just seems so uh, completely inopportune but uh i i got my ps2 emulator in 4k i got it in widescreen today and i ran quantum of solace and it looked legitimately like I was playing it on my Xbox Series X remaster to a point. It was the cleanest, best. It, it ran at a perfect frame rate. If you saw it, you would have said, OK, Lucas, I, I think you have won. This is better than my PS2. I mean, and you can get it for free. So I don't know why you wouldn't want to jump on that as fast as you could. Why do you want to get out the PS2? That seems pretty outdated and kind of cumbersome. Why don't you? Is it because you, ha you have a Mac? And I'm not even Mac shaming you because, guys, I love Apple, but I'm such a PC guy at the same time. So, but even then, you could you could do this on the computer that you probably have. I don't know what your Windows computer situation is, but I mean, for as much as I like to joke to you about it and say you're a peasant, that's just all joking. But like, legitimately, why not? Well. There, How much nostalgia is rooted in the controller and the console? Like, what line are you, there are you is, hitting? <clears throat> you know, there's multiple facets to the question you ask me. So, first off, before we move on, let me let me paint you a picture of a memory. Yes. Of back when I was first introduced to Mac, right? And it was in a little movie called Legally Blonde. And in that movie, she goes to the store, she picks it up. It's a nice orange, you know, whatever mm -hmm. the hell it was called. What are those called? Those are the, uh, the clamshell iBooks, right? Clamshell iBooks. Okay. No, 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 no. What are, I, hold on, let me look it up. Continue talking. Okay. Well, it, I don't know. It, it just seemed so attainable unattainable unattainable i don't know what i mean but it, it seemed un unobtainable to me uh in the movie it seemed very attainable she just runs to the store and goes and grabs it but at that time they were thousands and thousands of dollars and i was a little mm, kid yeah and that just sort of you know it painted that picture for me for the rest of my life honestly um, was you know Mac as being this this you know great yeah it's you know, the uh, the iBook third generation is the color generation one it was okay. the iBook yeah okay. okay yeah so I would love to 
hold one of those in my hand <laughs> and, and, you know, play around with it. I would love to do that. If somebody had one of those, I would love to take it for a spin, you know, but I would not want to own it. Why? I don't know. It seems useless to me. Yeah, but there, there is, and there is that line there, right? Of what is considered useful or useless. So on and I so forth. I guess in 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 the most literal of terms, it is useless. But I guess I guess if I get enjoyment out of it and I can like open it up and see how the board works on it and get it working if it's if it's not or clean it up and restore it to make it look nice, I guess that makes it useful sure. because it's giving it some purpose. Sure. You know, and then you can either resell it or keep it for your collection or something. Or, you know, sometimes and I don't like to do this all the time, but like I have like a little shelf over here that occasionally I'll like put a couple themed things on. Like I'll put some Mario toys there for a few weeks and have a little setup. And then a couple weeks later, I'll put some Apple stuff up there with the retro stuff with the box. It's just something that I like to look at. No one else sees it, but it's just my little corner. And I get and, that uh, as a novelty. Make... Yeah, right? it's a total novelty thing as to where uh, those two MacBooks that I showed are 100% useful. And would I be upset if I got rid of my MacBook Pro? Yeah, I, the one that I'm using right now, it's 2020. It's phenomenal. I love it. But if I got rid of it, I do everything else on my other Macs as well and on my PC. So would it suck? Yeah, but I would forget about it in a couple of weeks time. Still fully functional. Now, in maybe three years down the line, we're going to hit a roadblock where there's some new features that are released that are not compatible. And then in five years, down the line and then six, seven, we're definitely going to hit an eventual roadblock because if you even want to get uh, like a 2008 MacBook per se, the white version of the unibody design or even an iBook from 2005, it's not working. So you're going to hit that wall eventually. Um, I guess it's just got to be supported, you know? So, but why do you want two MacBooks? I guess you're not a computer guy. It's not useful for you. <laughs> that is correct. I don't know. I wouldn't. Um, let me first say this, that I, I move on very quickly when it comes to tech and nothing else, right? Everything else I, in my life has claw marks in it from it leaving me. Um, but Except Blu-ray, it, you jumped on a 4k real fast. Like that, baby. <laughs> I, I always look for the next best thing. You know, I still have that mentality um, back in the day of, uh, you know, where physical media was more present, so to speak, you know. So I always jump onto the next best thing. Um, and then I will sell my previous thing. And, you know, I'm basically that guy that, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that was on the Titanic that would either a not listen to them when they were like women and children please only women and children and i just start <laughs> shoving through everybody and i'm like me and i jump yes i can know, attest to and this. i'm like and I, i'm going right right in there as quickly as i possibly can or i'm the one that dresses as a woman and gets onto the boat like that or get on the boat, please. <laughs> Do your Caitlin, your Caitlin <laughs> Jenner. <laughs> wow, I, I don't know. We're we're going shopping for some shows, okay? Yeah, <laughs> and we're going. I don't know. I, I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing anymore. Uh, language alert. Anyway, yes. Um, <laughs> Lucas knows about that. Conscious about that, not because you said anything to me about it. But because, because of how so much I swore. Oh, good. Oh, good. Gosh. It's terrible. <laughs> Gosh. Darn it. Yeah. Golly gee willikers, Brandon. Uh, let's, let's continue. Anyway, so. And that. Those options I just went over are only if I'm still on the boat, because let me tell you what. <laughs> as soon as I see that iceberg, I'm probably jumping right off the side. You know what I mean? I'm out of there, baby. Well, I, I guess this um, <laughs> this 
baby. Yeah, this uh, this go, anecdote. Go, baby. <laughs> This this anecdote really um really made sense as far as like this we are we already kind of talked about like a, a vast majority of it so it's like one of our last final points we're actually coming to a close very shortly here believe it or not um but we're gonna do like a final wrap it up put on a bow on this topic we talked about a good chunk of it earlier but um as Brandon just said that he's very fast to move on the new technologies um so am I in a lot of respects too you know I. I loved Mac, had to go M1. I, I, I love my gaming PC, had to upgrade the processor. I did all that in a very short amount of time. Uh, you know, I love console gaming still. You know, even though I'm a PC guy, I got the Series X. I still do have the latest and greatest, but I do have that nostalgic soft spot. But at the same time, Brandon also has a PS5. He is all for digital remasters of all these old games he doesn't mm. really care about emulating them either or getting right. the ps2 adapters if it were up to him he could have everything that way and i totally get it too but i also think there's something to be said for the original game in its original form but that's something that uh he looks at in in that aspect so it's sure. uh it's i guess it's another way to look at that topic because video games are are a whole different ball game with uh Error compared to electronics because a 13 year old console and a game offers you a much different experience than a 13 year old computer is on many different levels. And that's why you still use that out outdated tech, right? Correct. So exactly. So ultimately the question that was posed earlier was what do I consider outdated? That isn't so important as what do I consider useless? Because just because something is outdated doesn't mean it's useless to me. For sure. Because, yes, right? So, but there is outdated tech that is, of course, useless to me. Of course, you know? So, so it, it's weird. It's, it's one of those things where it's like... Useless. But still cool. Useless. I actually, I have sure. one last piece of tech over here that is totally useful. Can't show it to you yet. We're not at that point. Okay. So... I can look at, at, you know, old things, old systems, for instance, like an N64. I'm like, hello, old friend, sweet, sweet friend that was there on so many dark nights. (laughs) (laughs) That happened. Then I would need to grab it and have some alone time with the N64. But, Mm -hmm. you know, all of that aside, Here's the deal. It's mostly useless to me because of what Lucas said, because of the fact that most games have been remastered for newer systems, you know, and, you know, like the switch, for instance, of course, it sucks that they charge you a monthly rate to play old horrible services. 100%. I, I don't agree with that, but I I do enjoy that I, I have that opportunity to play it on, you know, the newest technology. And, you know, I, I sort of skimmed over the question before about emulators. And it's because of what Lucas just said as well. Honestly, it's because most games I can play on just new systems, you know, being that remasters are such a, a prevalent thing these days. I'm I'm a sucker. When it comes for remasters, you know, it could basically be the exact same game with little to no changes, just on a different newer system. And chances are I'm going to buy it. I'm that person that's going to buy the same game five times. Um, I'm the person that will buy the same movie five times, you know. So let, let's talk about rebuying the same game however many times for however many different versions end up coming out. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm happy you understand. 